Hello, welcome back to RS Thinks. Today we've got a car to review. So I borrowed this Skoda Enyaq from the EV Experience Centre in Milton Keynes again. So we're in a car park in Milton Keynes, a lovely sunny day, perfect weather for filming. I've not had a car on the channel in a long time. I think the last one I had was probably the e-tron i think uh last year i've been trying to get the enyaq for a while now and luckily things lined up meaning i could get it today so we'll start with the outside first so this car is finished in arctic silver which is a cost option it's 660 pounds and it's also got a light and view basic package which means that it's got the led matrix headlights which are really cool. I've got them on my um, ID3 and I wouldn't be without them now. They're really good. Um, this one's got 20 inch alloy wheels. Again, this is a cost option of 550 pounds and they're 20 inch. The front is 23550R90 and the rear is 2554520. So slightly different size tire front to back. This car doesn't get a um, spare tire in the back and i don't think it's an option to actually put one in either i didn't see it in the option sheet but i could be wrong i'll post below if you can so looking more closely at the front of the car we've got this huge big plastic fake grill here with a blanking plate on because this doesn't have the 360 camera system this car's just got the reversing camera we've got parking sensors on the bumper and down here we've got a grill here to aid with airflow as well and we've also got on the sides here, we've got vents that go all the way through that actually channel the air through as well. So the first thing I notice on the side of the car is you've got this really nice body line that comes all the way from the front, around the headlight, all the way across here, through the doors, all the way to the back, and it runs across the boot too, and then continues around the other side. Looks really nice, like really nice finish. You've got this black sort of fake vent here, doesn't really do anything. I believe on the Sportline and the Sportman X, it actually shows the uh, model on, on here too. Quite large mirrors with the indicator in here too. And door handles, not flush like the ID4. They're kind of proud like the ID3. Um, this one doesn't have keyless entry, unfortunately. So even though we've got the little bobble here for locking your, locking your car when the key's in your pocket, it doesn't actually do anything. You've got plastic down the bottom which is probably a good idea because you don't want the stones and stuff to go on there. And we've got quite a nice amount of chrome. So the whole window area, the glass area is bordered by a nice chrome piece. We've got chrome on the roof rack bars as well. Some of the lower spec models just get black here. So yeah, really liking the profile of it. So looking down the side of the car here, we've got the rear three quarters. The line you can see I spoke about earlier comes round here, around to the boot lid. I think that's a really nice design feature. Got the rear lights, which on this car are LED. They have the chasing indicator as well. And Skoda refers to these as the Skoda crystal lighting. Now, the crystal is a reference to Bohemia crystal, which is very famous in the Czech Republic. Skoda once being a Czech um, company. That's why they always kind of reference this. So if you look at the back, of any Skoda car, they've always got this kind of multifaceted features with the lights, harking back to the Bohemia Crystal. I always think it's a really nice feature. So just a quick look at the back of the car before I open the boot. We've got the new style Skoda. Used to be a, like round badges in the back of the cars, but now they've gone with the lettering. We've got the IV to signify this is an electric vehicle. We've got the AT, which means it's got the 82 kilowatt hour battery, of which 77 kilowatts is usable. As we open the boot, you can see the reversing camera just here. It's permanently down, um, so it does get a little wipe here with the, with the water squirt of things, so you can keep it clean. The boot's quite large. It's, it's one of the largest of this um, style of SUV. It's 585 litres, which is more than the ID4 and more than the Aria and more than the Key 4, I believe, as well. Underneath, we've got a small sort of load area in, in here, which is the same on every MEB platform car. So the ID3, uh, the Enyaq, the Q4, they've all got this little, little space down in here as well. We've got cargo hooks at all four corners. We've got 
uh, 12 volt socket in the back too. We've also got a little thing here for putting your shopping on and these other hooks that fold down here, left and right in there. And then we've got some small little storage spaces left and right. Ski flap going through as well. And we've got a retractable load cover too. So again, just to look at the side of the car again, we've, we've got the chrome roof rails coming across the top. We've got the extended part of the, the boot as well. The ID3, ID4 both get this. It just adds to the aerodynamics. Got shark fin aerial on the top. And for charging on this side here, we've got type two with CCS in here. Now this particular car only charges at 50 kilowatts because it was one of the earlier ENIACs, but I believe that if you were to buy an ENIAC new, now if you can find one, get your order in, that they will charge at 135 kilowatts. It may be possible to actually upgrade this car via a software update. Um, dealer would do this. Um, I think the cost is between 400 and 450 pounds, something like that, assuming it's available for this particular car. So if you've seen one of my car reviews before, something I always do is check out the back to see how much room there is. I'm about six foot two inches tall so i've got the driver's seat as i would have it so let's go and see how much room i've got in the back so i'm in the back and there's quite a lot of room here which is good the seat back has probably got maybe a couple of inches between that but it's actually sculpted out as well so if i put my legs here i'll get some sort of like more space too headroom headroom's pretty good i've probably got about that much room between the top of my head and the top of the roof lining, which is good. Um, something that I'm not seeing in the back here, I'm just looking, there's no USB-C ports in the back of this car here, not even a 12 volt power socket, but you do have a flat floor. Um, we do have air vents, but no, no way to power anything. So if you've got kids with tablets and stuff, then this particular spec wouldn't be good for them. I believe, I'll just check my spec sheet here. If you add the family package basic, you actually get some blinds in the rear windows and you actually get two USB-C ports down here as well. And that's a cost of 345 quid. If you want to go a little bit extra, you can get that as well. So the sun blinds, the USB-C ports and folding tables that come out of this one and something called a sleep package, which means there's some extra bits that fold down from the headrests, that will set you back 500 quid. So for me, I'd be running a cable from the front USB ports, which are way, way over there, to be able to power things that are in the back or have to resort to a USB charging bank. Uh, back of the seats, I've got two pockets. We've got a large pocket at the back, and then just in front of that, we've got a smaller pocket, which feeling it, you could put um, a mobile phone in there, possibly a small tablet, something like that. You've got ISOFIX on the rear seats as well, just need to move the small little plastic clip there. We've also got um, the armrest that comes down. One thing I like about the Skoda armrests is that they, they, they have a flap on. So when you're holding it, you're kind of okay. And then you pull the flap out and that's when you reveal the actual drinks holders. So you're not having to rest your arm on the, the holes for where the flap is which is quite cool. Uh, we've also got the load through as well, so items can come through here. And we've got adjustable headrests, headrests in the middle too. And we've got courtesy lights in the back as well. So yeah, the back's, the back's quite a good place to be. Um, you've got a um, very supportive seat, very, very comfortable seat. I think I could easily stay here on a long journey. Um, very good visibility, because you're kind of sitting, looking over the driver. Um, although if I'm sat in the front, maybe I'm a little bit taller, you wouldn't be able to see over me, but yeah, all-round visibility is quite good. In the door, we've got what looks like a little tweeter, probably a bigger speaker in the bottom. We've got a um, decent sized door pocket and window switch, chrome metal door pull, which is nice. And we, it looks like we've got an LED colored um, LED bar here. It's just daylight at the moment, so I can't see that. So. I'll check that out in the darkness. So that's the rear. So just to give you an overview of the size of the car. So it's 4.64 meters long. It's 1.62 meters tall. And 
The ID4, of which this car is based, is actually shorter by its 4.58 meters, but it's actually taller than this, it's 1.64 meters. So I suspect that's something to do with the suspension between the cars being slightly different, or maybe even the tire size, it could be something like that. Let's have a quick look in the interior, in the front. So this is the suite interior, which is a 1,380 pound option. For that, you get leather and you get this really nice brown copper stitching and piping in here as well. You got uh, ventilated leather at the bottom um, and normal leather on top. The leather even expands onto the dash here as well with the, with the stitching too. Leather steering wheel. This is a two spoke steering wheel, so it's not the sport one. The sport one has a bit at the bottom too and it also has got um, a little bit more sporty feeling to it. Well I got the door open as with most Skodas you get an umbrella in the door. The only other manufacturer that I know that does this is Rolls-Royce so this is quite handy. So let's have a further look inside. So the interior of the Enyaq is really really nice as i said this is this is the sweet level the sweet trim so you've got the leather going around the dash here you've got the copper stitching across the dash too and also on the seats and the copper piping as well it's also on the armrest here under the armrest we've got double storage so we've got a little shelf and then we've got another all the way down here which is quite cool little light inside little elastic thing as well so you can snap your phone in or something Centre console here, we've got another storage binnacle there. We've got the parking brake, got the drive select mode, we've got cup holders, and we've got two sort of mobile phone size things here, and USB-C ports at the back. I don't think these are wireless charging on this model, but wireless charging is available. Again, it's another optional extra. Um, got buttons down here for heating front and rear screens, climate control, We've got the locking, the hazard warning lights, parking assist to pop up the camera. And we've got the drive mode. And then we've got one called set, which if you press it, you actually get um, the uh, settings for the tire pressures and things on there. The screen is fantastic. It's 12 inch screen. So all the Skoda type interface is really nice and sharp, but I've actually got the map on here and it looks a bit fuzzy um, in the Android Auto section. So I'm not, not too keen on that. It, it's as if they've kept the same resolution for a smaller screen, but they've made the screen bigger, but not up the resolution. So it's ever so slightly fuzzy, but it's still usable, it's, it's, it's fine. Steering wheel feels really nice. It feels sporty, um, leather covered, as I said before. It's got lots of um, buttons on, on here too. Uh, none of it is haptic feedback. So it's not like the ID3 and ID4. These are proper buttons that actually respond to a press, they, they, a physical press. You've got two scroll wheels left and right, which feel really nice. They do the volume and they uh, cycle through options when you're looking down the screen here. The screen in the middle is really nice and sharp, uh, really clear to read. Um, what else have we got? So in the door, we've got the usual uh, window controls, front and back, and we've got the little joystick to do the mirrors. We've got buttons down here on the right to do the lights. So we've got fog lights. We've got, um, I think they call it rain lights now rather than front fog lights. And then we've got the button to do the auto lights too. Um, usual sun visors, mirrors. Mirror's quite cool. Mirror is almost rimless. It's very, very small rim on it. Um, and I believe it's an auto dipping one too. Glove box suffers from every MEB platform car in as much as looks quite wide but it's not actually quite wide it's it's half the size because that's where the fuse box is inside there so if you're driving a left-hand drive car in this um, model then you get a really nice glove box on this side because the fuses are on the other side so I really wish they'd change that but it's not going to happen um, seats are very very comfortable we've got uh, manual height adjustment and we've also got manual lumbar support too and because they're sort of sporty like sports seats they're very very comfortable very supporting um, you've got isofix on the front passenger seat as well which i know from when i spec'd my kodiak that that was an optional extra so 
it's good that they put this on as standard. Um, headrests, as usual, push the button in, move up, move down, as normal. So, so yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice cockpit. So that was just a brief overview of the interior. Um, all that remains for me to do now is to get this home from Milton Keynes. And then next week, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a road trip on it. As I said before, I've, I've got this for a week, a whole week, and I'm gonna go to the latest grid serve electric forecourt, which is opening in Norwich next week. I've been invited along to the opening ceremony. So we're gonna go along in this. We'll see how it does on a long trip. Um, I believe it's about 100 miles from my house, so it's a 200 mile round trip. So I'm debating to see whether I can do it in the whole thing. Um, or whether I should charge when I get there. Um, I think I'll decide when I'm there just to see what it's like actually getting there. I, I don't want to be halfway home or three quarters away home and, 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 and have to charge again. Obviously this is going to be weather dependent too. So if it's raining, um, I probably will charge there. If it's a beautiful day like today, then I probably won't and, and see how we get on. So it'll just be a couple of seconds for you, but it's um, probably three, four days for me. So I'll see you shortly. So while I'm driving on my way to GridServe, I'll give you a bit more information about the car. So this is the Skoda Enyaq IV80. Um, as I said previously, it's got the 82 kilowatt hour battery with 77 kilowatt hours usable. The electric motor is the same that I have in my ID3. So it's a 150 kilowatt motor and that produces 204 PS, so just, just over 200 brake horsepower. The drive is also the same, it's rear wheel drive too, and you don't have much space under the boot floor, you've just got that small little um, opening that you can just about get your cable into. So the official range from the manufacturer is 329 miles WLTP. If you look on EV database, then it gives a real world range of 260 miles, which I, I think is pretty accurate, um, based on what I know I get out of my ID3. This being a heavy car, the bigger battery doesn't really make much of a difference just because of the sheer weight of the car. The car weighs in at just over two and a half tons as well. So it's kind of comparable to the ID4, comparable to the Q4 as well. So it, it's not a, not a light car. But that said, it is quite nippy. Um, if you put it in sport mode, it hits 60 in about, I think it's 8.7 seconds, which is, which is pretty good. It's only about a second uh, slower than my ID3, which is a, a much smaller car, much lighter car. So it's definitely got some power there. So this car can also tow. You can spec it with a tow bar too. Um, it can do 1200 kilograms braked and 1000 kilograms unbraked. If you go for the um, all-wheel drive Sportline version, then you can actually tow 1,400 kilograms brake. So it's definitely good for a tow car. Um, speaking about the driving mode as well, I mentioned the driving mode. So you've got an Eco, a Normal and a Sport. And when you put the car into either Eco or Sport, it will automatically choose uh, the regen mode based on your situation so if you're slowing down and it knows there's a roundabout coming up it will put you in like um, level one or level two level three to slow you down um, which, which I think is quite good you can override it yourself as well so you can use the pedals to turn it on and off um, as you want to with the eco and sport mode though when you do turn it on then it actually stays on which is quite cool um, which sort of took a little bit of getting used to for me but um, it was it was a good feature really I, I really liked it if you have it in normal mode then when you use the regen paddles then it, it's only for that instance so as soon as you lift off the accelerator you can use the paddles to increase or decrease the regen but the moment you go back on the accelerator again then that setting is is lost um, until you go back and you start slowing down again and then you can set it again so I think, I think that was quite good because not every situation is the same. So the cost of the car I'm sitting in at the moment is a little over £40,000. The, the base cost of the um, 80 is £40,305. Um, this car has got the added extra of the Matrix headlights with the, I think it's called the, um, the something and light pack. I'll put the name at the bottom. 
Now that is um, an £1,100 premium and gives you the obviously the, the full LED lights front and back and gives you the matrix lights. So let's call it uh, 40, £41,000 uh, for the car. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there's quite a lot of things missing from this car that I would have liked to have seen on a 40 grand plus car. The USB-C charging in the back, I, I think that's a massive oversight um, and should be a standard. Like, why is it not a standard? Um, this car does have cruise control, but doesn't have adaptive cruise control. But, because it's got the auto regen, it's actually using the forward facing um, cameras to look at the road signs and things for that to be able to slow it down. So why can't we do that with the with the cruise control? That would be that would be quite good. Um, other features such as electric seats, um, they would be nice. Heated seats would be nice. Um, but all those are extras. So when you are looking to spec um, an Enyaq, please go through the list of options that you get as standard and just see if you can live without um, some of the more ones that, that you would expect. Don't assume that you get them just because it's a 40 grand car, because there are, there's a, there's a huge options list. There's, there's such a lot of things missing. So I did go to the configuration site on the, on the internet, the, uh, the Skoda site, and when I spec a car up with everything that I've got in my Kodiak, so my Kodiak was probably sub sub forty thousand. It's a it's a lease, so I haven't paid forty grand. But the amount of kit I had to add on to get it up to the spec of the Kodiak was about five thousand pounds, which is is um, quite a lot of money to add on just to get it up to the spec that you that that I think it should be from from factory. Um, so please bear that in mind when you are looking at the cars. Um, if you look at one in the showroom, check it's got USB in the back because my daughter, her, her face kind of dropped. Uh, we did an impromptu trip to Huddersfield the other day, just, just for Easter, just for the day on, on Saturday. And when she got in the back, she's like, where do I plug my tablet? Where do I plug my phone? It's, oh, sorry, you're going to need to use this USB battery that I've got because there was just no, no option in the back at all. There are USB sockets in the front, but of course, stretching the cable to the back um, isn't ideal. And also, we were actually using the sockets in the front to charge our phones, myself and my wife, because this car doesn't even have wireless charging. That is an optional extra as well. There are the um, bays underneath the dash at the, at the front here, so the two phones can sort next to each other, but there's no wireless charging in this car, because again, it's an optional extra. So you're having to resort to plugging your phone in, um, even more so when you're using Android Auto because the phone uses a bit more juice than usual because it's not in standby mode. So if you're gonna get one without wireless charging, then you need a USB-C cable as well. As far as driving goes for the car, um, it's, it's very smooth, I, I really like it. Um, it. It handles well. Um, I said before, the seats are very comfortable. Um, we went on the trip to Huddersfield the other day, it was three hours, um, very, very comfortable. We weren't um, experiencing any kind of backache or any pains or anything from being in the car for a long time, so that was quite good. Uh, driving position is really nice. In the ID3, it took some getting used to just because of where the eight pillars were, but in here, because they're slightly further forward, my line of sight looking across there isn't, isn't obstructed as much, which is, which is good. Um, I really like the mirrors too. The mirrors um, are huge, they're, they're really long, so you get a really good um, view over your shoulder, um, left and right. It's, it's almost like a panoramic view because they do have a slight curve to them, so you can really see behind and you can overtake things with confidence knowing that you can see behind that there's nothing coming. So I really like the mirrors. So in conclusion to what I've just said, the Enyaq is a fantastic car. It's just I'm disappointed with the spec of, of this actual car that I'm driving now. There's, there's lots of things missing that I would have expected. Um, so if I was to spec one of these myself, um, as, as I said, I'd, I'd probably end up spending between three and five grand on extras, um, which cost is always a factor to me when I'm looking at a new car. It, it's not a 
case of I'm just going to drop 45 grand on a car, I've, I've really got to weigh up what the benefits I'm, I'm going to get. Hence, when I've got my ID3, uh, because I couldn't get alloys, I sort of that's okay because I'd rather have the spec in the car. Uh, when I'm driving the car, I can't see the alloys, I can't see the hook cap, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, yes, I would like some, but it's it's not a not a necessity really. So the spec of the car is, is, is always the uh, thing that will swing it for me. And this is this is nice. The interior is really nice. I, I really like the fact that they went with the sweet interior, which has got the really nice seats, um, really nice finish. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably spec that myself as well, actually. But yeah, it's 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 a nice car, but um, I think it's flawed with the amount of equipment you get as standard. You really do have to hit the options and hit a load of buttons and just to get it up to a spec of a normal car. And, and, and that's a shame when you're spending 40 grand on a car, moving away from the side that it's an electric car and it's going to be a bit more expensive anyway. If you're spending 40 grand on a car, you're going to expect some kind of charging in the back, whether it's USB ports or even a 12 volt socket. Um, that said, I am I am liking the car, it's just the spec, really. So, I made it to Gridserve, I'm here, it looks fantastic. I'm going to do another video about this, uh, which is separate to this one, so I'll link it in the top corner so you can see uh, what it's all about here at the new place in Norwich. So um, I've arrived here with 173 miles remaining, which is which is pretty good. And if I look at the stats on the screen over here, I've got 105 mile uh, trip that we've just done, just over two hours, average speed of 49 miles an hour, and our, our miles per kilowatt is 3.5. So that's that's pretty good. Um, it is a nice day. It's it's 19 degrees here. It's nice and sunny. I was making use of the paddles on the back of the steering wheel as well, so using it to slow down for junctions and roundabouts, that kind of stuff. So that's obviously contributed to the uh, range that we've got out of this. So I'm not going to charge here. Um, I'm going to drive back home when I've finished here, which will be another 105 miles. So we should see what we've got left on, uh, on the range of the car when we get home. On the way back, I did 104 miles and I achieved 3.9 miles a kilowatt, which is pretty good going. Um, anything close to four is good, anything over four is fantastic. Um, I was going for an economy run, so I didn't go over 65 miles an hour at all during the trip. And due to the route that I was taking, there was quite a lot of roundabouts. So between the car slowing me down for the roundabouts and me using uh, the, uh, the paddles to do the regen braking, that's the figure I achieved, 3.9 miles a kilowatt, which I'm very happy with. The total trip was 209 miles, and for that I got 3.7 miles a kilowatt, which again is, is quite good. The um, range left in the car when I got home was 75 miles, so if you add all those numbers together, it gives a potential total range of 285 miles, which, which is pretty good. Um, obviously driving like a saint in the latter stages of the journey has inflated that value, but um, it just goes to show what is actually possible in a, in a car this big. So um, at the moment I'm driving back up to Milton Keynes to drop the Enyaq back, and they had availability for a Audi Q4, so I've got an Audi Q4 for the weekend, so I'm gonna do something pretty similar to what we've just seen for this, uh, for this new car. So stay tuned, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.